I'm Jeff Jordan, the engineering manager for Go Engineer in San Diego, and we're here to talk about SolidWorks Electrical Harnessing Fundamentals. So if you caught the 2016 3D Print Spring Road Show that we did at any of our offices, you'll recognize this. This is our RC car that we did a bunch of additive manufacturing tricks and designed for um, topology optimization. And I thought that this would be a cool vehicle, terrible pun there, uh, to talk about harnessing. Uh, we It's something that a lot of our customers are doing with SolidWorks Electrical, a lot of our customers are doing with other software, and um, I felt like this would be something familiar and fun to do. So this is actually the 3D model that we created uh, with the wires routed and everything in there, put some headlights and taillights on it as well. Um, so this is what we're gonna be talking about. So SolidWorks Electrical, a little background here. Um, our SolidWorks 3D CAD customers, which is what most of our customers know us through, uh, have always done the mechanical side of things in SolidWorks. Uh, what we were missing would be the rest of it. You know, so in this case, we got all of our electrical components, um, our, our wired, uh, routed wires, ducts, guides, things like that, our supporting equipment, as well as the mechatronic sensors and the harnesses that connect everything. So SolidWorks Electrical was a tool that we brought on a few years ago to really bring all this together, uh, more of a systems level tool. And uh, we didn't really have anything like that. There's not there's not a whole lot of other products on the market that are that, that do this. So um, you know we we do a little bit of intro here. Uh, whenever we talk about SolidWorks Electrical, or at least whenever I do, um, I get people that are excited. Oh, SolidWorks Electrical, that's great. You know I've been waiting for a PCB tool from SolidWorks, or you know that's great, wonderful. How do you do with boards? How many layers do you support? You know do you have this and this? And it's like well look we we do have an electrical product. It's it's called SolidWorks PCB. It just came out this year. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about here. When we talk about SolidWorks Electrical, we're talking about the wire and cable connections, the harnesses. Uh, most of the time we're talking about cabinets, ducts, guides, terminals. In this, in, in this presentation, we're just talking about harnesses, but we're talking about board level things and up. We're not talking about designing the actual boards with SolidWorks Electrical. So harnesses, schmarnesses, what's the big deal anyway? What are harnesses, right? So we've got a definition in SOLIDWORKS Electrical and it's kind of a catch-all. So we deal with wires, which are uh, the individual conductors, one to another. We deal with cables, which are multiple conductors, single or multiple conductors under a common sheath. But as soon as you want to include multiple wires and cables, or as soon as you want to go from uh, anything more complicated than all the wires from one place to all the wires going to the same other place, um, we need to get into harnesses. So it's a little bit of a catch-all. It's kind of a container here, but it, we're taking wires and cables as well as all the associated connectors, components, coverings, and all that, everything that goes under a common sheath, and we're calling that one harness. So this is multi-point connections, not just one, one point to one point. So grouping the wire and cable routes, and some people call these, you know, cable assemblies or cable groups or custom cables or, you know, lots of different names throughout lots of different industries for, for this idea of taking all these wires and cables and, and kind of routing them together and covering them with one cover. The idea is to make it a modular wiring system. So this makes it easier at all levels, whether it's, it's easier to document, it's easier to manufacture, whether you're doing that internally or outsourcing it. It's easier to install, it's easier to support. So when we're documenting wiring systems, uh, it's a, once we start breaking it down into modular sections, I can kind of parse this out to different areas of the team or uh, you know, easily replace one section with another if something needs to be changed, rather than having to go through and double check that changing one wire here doesn't affect everything else everywhere else. So this is kind of a common thing in lots of industries, but we deal with it mostly in aerospace and automotive. So here you've got a, you know, an example of aerospace, an example of automotive. Uh, I try to keep this interesting so that even if you don't do build harnesses all day like I used to, uh, you still might get something out of this. So aer aerospace and automotive are the two big industry verticals where you're going to see everyone talk about harnessing all the time. But my point is, we actually see it a lot of places, from, from the coffee maker to a fighter jet. Everything has wiring and it goes through it, and by making that wiring modular, by, by grouping it into a harness, actually gives you a lot of options uh, and makes it a lot easier to, throughout the life cycle of a product. So that's, that's why we see a bunch of people moving towards this. Uh, so here's an example of, uh, you know, again, going to basic SOLIDWORKS electrical stuff. This is what most people associate SOLIDWORKS electrical with if you've seen a demo from 2013, 2014. Well, 
it's like my most fun slide. This is the wrong presentation for that. If you do cabinets, this might still be interesting, especially if you build custom cables that go out from those cabinets. But what we're talking about here is harnesses. This is an electrical wiring harness. This is an engine harness for a uh, Toyota engine. Um, so you'll see this is completely different, right? We don't have DIN rail mount. We don't have DIN rails. We don't have uh, ducts. We don't have these uh, big components, you know, circuit breakers and fuses and PLCs and all that. Instead, we have wires. We have wires. We have connectors. But if you were to build this thing, like this wonderful gentleman is here, um, you need to know how to make one, right? It's a, you have to know how to document it. You have to know how to design it. You have to know all the details that go in there. This exact wire goes to this exact pin, crimped this exact way into this exact cavity of this exact connector. And then we run all these things all the way around and then we you know, loom them up or tape them up or zip tie them or whatever we're doing. So generally you need a bunch of information to manufacture one of these, just like all the guys on the mechanical side need a bunch of information to manufacture all their parts. And a lot of times it ends with something like this, a foam board uh, or a nail board. Um, so this is a one-to-one -one scale board of the harness. This is a big one. Um, but harnesses come in all, all shapes and sizes. And you can see we've got connectors that are placed on the board. And then you, you basically pin out those, uh, those connectors. You populate the connectors and then run the actual wire around to where it goes on the board. And then terminate the other end. Eventually, you'll have the whole harness there. And then you'll be able to loom it or um, tape it up. And not all harnesses are made this way, but a lot of them are. So let's talk about the information you need to, to make one of these, to build a harness, right? This is it. This is uh, this is the output from SolidWorks Electro, at least uh, an example of some of the output that we can do. Uh, this is on a D-size sheet, so this might actually be one-to-one, -one, but we do a, a manufacturing flatten of these routes. Uh, so you get these, uh, this is a scale, um, actually this one does happen to be one-to-one, -one, but you get a scale representation of the route. At each connector here, uh, you've got a connector table that has the uh, the pinout for this in individual connector. You actually have a, uh, a legend next to it with the actual colors on this one. Um, in the middle, you have a balloon. Uh, this is ballooned out like a mechanical assembly would be. Uh, we don't do that for the more complicated ones. But if you can read the really small text in here, you actually see the, the routed distances between these junctions down to 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, and then up, up top, you've got the circuit summary. So this is uh, this is a lot of uh, what people use to build these when you don't have something like SolidWorks Electrical. It's just a, a list of all the individual wire segments. Uh, but this one was generated from the software. This was generated automatically. So it's got from to the exact wire number, the exact wire diameter, exact wire color, and its exact length down to, again, you know, in this example, 10 thousandths of an inch. And down at the bottom, that's a bomb, combined electrical and mechanical bomb. So you've got your uh, mechanical bomb, which is the individual connectors. You've got your electrical bomb, which is the individual wires you need. But instead of being each individual wire segment here, this is grouped so all the wires of the same color have a common length. So you, you, you know, I need exactly 37.09 inches of green wire. I need exactly 35.2426 inches of blue wire etc. So this is everything you need to buy. The circuit summary up top is everything you need to make. The bomb down below is everything you need to buy. So the idea is if you had something like this, you'd know exactly what it costs. You know exactly how to make it. You could be this guy pretty easily. So, uh, you know, by now everyone that builds harnesses is pretty excited. Everybody that doesn't build harnesses is saying, uh, eh, that's kind of interesting. What else you got? <laughs> So, all right, I take it by now you say, okay, harnesses are cool, but but how do I draw one, right? I mean, what, what do I use? What do we do? Um, so how about Visio? Uh, this is probably what most of the industry uses if they're not using a tool, um, a, a very high-level tool or, or misusing like a PCB tool or something like that. Um, Visio is a flowchart application. It makes graphics on the screen. It can have a symbol library. So a lot of people use it. And you might say, you know, again, this is an engine harness over here for a four-cylinder engine. You might say, um, well, that looks pretty good, and it, it does. It looks it looks pretty good, but it's missing a ton of the information that you would need if you actually wanted to build this thing. So what about Microsoft Paint, good old MS Paint? I mean, people used to do it, right? I mean, you you anything anything to uh, to get it built, uh, people do that. And the other big one is the AutoCAD. No, we're going to put that in the trash. We don't want to use that either, and there's a couple of reasons for it, but basically... The, the problem with all these three of these tools here is that 
they don't have a lot of the information that you need to actually build the harness. If you if the information is there, it's because you added it manually. And so we want to make it a little easier for you. So here's what we call the, the common schematic design process. Common should probably be in quotes, but this is if we were to distill down the, the way that everybody does their, their wiring and their electro, uh, you know, the wiring and cabling work, you'd end up with something like this. You got a drawing phase. The logical definition is, you know, in this case, I got a switch to an e-stop to a relay, but this could be, you know, I go from a Deutsch connector over here um, to a, uh, to a Honeywell switch over here, over to this, um, you know, mil spec circular connector over there. Then you do a part selection. You say, well, I'm going to use this particular Deutsch connector. I'm going to use this particular Honeywell, you know, 1NT91 switch. And I'm going to use this particular, you know, 3474, uh, you know, circular connector. And then the cable drawing, which is I'm going to use this wire to connect from pin 1 to terminal 1 of the switch, from terminal 2 of the switch down to, you know, pin A of the, the circular connector, what, whatever you have be. So... You've got these three steps. This is the drawing phase, and this tends to be the phase that everyone like myself that's um, that's interested in designing harnesses and electrical systems, this is the part where you're doing your work. This is where you're earning your keep. Next, you got the documentation phase. This is the part that's less exciting. Uh, you got to create the bomb, right? So we got to say, well, I've got one of these. I got two of these. You got to go find the part numbers. You're matching it all up. You do the wire and cable list, so you know you got uh, a list of everything that you needed to, to build it. And then you do a from to list, so you're saying you know this one goes from this connector to that connector, and from you know pin A over here to terminal one on this, and yada yada yada. Well, you'll notice that this isn't in a drafting program. This is usually done in Excel, and there's no automatic button to go from Microsoft Paint or Visio or any of that to Excel. So usually this is a manual process, and that's kind of the rub. And not to mention it's a lot less fun for the people that design these things. Then you got the auditing phase. I kind of laughed when I first saw this. I was like, nobody does that. But this would be like, um, you know, for me, uh, you know, if I designed this with a, a switch or a connector or something that, that was um, – you know, I had a 12-week lead time and was five times more expensive than uh, than the, the next compatible connector. Uh, you, you'd audit your drawings, you'd audit your bomb, and you'd verify that that's going to work, and then you'd sub out that component. But that involves going all the way back to your drawing to change it, and then changing the documentation. Otherwise, your drawing doesn't match your documentation. And anybody that builds this kind of stuff, any any electrical work, any harnessing. You always look back to do an as-built. You know, you go to see how it actually got built. If it works, great. Now you audit what you made, and you make your documentation match that. Does that sound familiar? Yes. I got. I'm seeing nods over the internet. So, um, this this is a what we call a common process. I think everybody sees some some uh, uh, familiarity here with what we're talking about. And and here's the pitch, right? SolidWorks Electrical is going to, you're going to do this first drawing phase that you were going to do anyway. You're going to do that in SolidWorks Electrical. It's, it's basically a tool designed specifically for that. And if you do that, you're going to get these next two steps for free. It's going to completely automate these steps. So not only do you not have to spend your time doing it, but you don't even have to spend your time checking what you didn't spend your time to do because it's all done automatically and error free. And so that's the that's the time savings there. Um, the people that can see the value there, uh, they usually say, okay, show it to me. I, I'm, you know, I want to see it. This is amazing. Um, most people want to say, okay, well, you know, how hard is it to do and all that? But this is it. If you build harnesses and you've gone through any of this stuff a couple of times, you can see how this would help. So then the question is always, well, how does it do it? And I'll run through this quickly here. We have uh, a few different document types here. We have a single line in the upper left. We have a multi-line in the lower left. We have our reports in the upper right, and we have wonderful 3D in the lower right. All of these document types communicate through the SolidWorks Electrical database with each other. So this is, it's a SQL database. We're not talking about like Microsoft Access here. This isn't any 90s stuff. So this is a SQL database. It's made to be very fast, very searchable, and it scales really well. So even if you have a lot of documents, or even if you have a lot of components, or even if your 3D is very complicated, it doesn't matter. The SQL database keeps everything straight so that all of these, all of these uh, places where data can live, whether it's being fed in from there or read out from there, um, it all stays up to date. So this is the heart of it here, and I, I stole this slide from SolidWorks, so you might have seen it a couple of times, but... 
We've got this shared library across 2D and 3D with a very powerful SQL search. We've got all of our metadata and it's all linked to part numbers. So that's the key. We need a manufacturer and we need a part number. And then the rest of this metadata kind of slides into there. But part of this metadata is the circuit and terminal information. So you're going to hear that about four times here. Uh, circuits and terminals are very important. That's how we diagram electrically what's going on inside a device. You know, for connectors, it might be, you know, I've got a circuit for each pin and maybe there's a connection for the wire side and a connection for the, uh, the pin actually connecting to something. Um, you know, connectors can be fairly simple, but other electrical components might have many different types of circuits in there. And it's very important, even if it's if it's electrically very simple, that these circuits and terminals all match. I want to know that when I'm pointing to this terminal on this 3D part, it's talking to this terminal in the database so it knows which circuit it's on. And again, whenever we talk about metadata and how much cool stuff we can store inside this database, everybody starts getting cold sweats thinking like, oh, I need to spend all my time, you know, implementing this. You know, you start thinking it's a, you know, like a PLM implementation here. It's not. I'm a very practical person. I'm not going to spend my time putting things into a database. I'm going to use these tools, these import tools. And anything that's in table format or database format now, whatever you've got currently, we can feed it in. So again, I'm going to spend my time doing design work, not throwing stuff into the database. So harnessing in SolidWorks Electrical, let's do it. Well, the first stage, and this is kind of something we came up with at GoEngineer, is we got to have a whiteboard stage. Uh, this is systems level software, essentially. Um, the, the people that this software is designed for, the people who are going to benefit most from it, are like project management level, or at least, uh, you know, um, managing a, a group of engineers that are uh, responsible for multiple parts of this. So if you're responsible for the, the mechanical and the electrical side of, of seeing something come together, you're going to gain a lot from this tool. Um, we find that the people who are most successful are the people that are able to do this whiteboard stage. We have to say, what kind of documents do we want to see? What kind of parts are we going to use? Unlike regular drafting software, you know, non-intelligent drafting software, where we're just drawing lines and, and text on the screen, you can't just jump into SolidWorks Electrical and start drawing stuff. So whenever people see this software for the first time, if they haven't really been introduced to it, they say, well, I don't know what it does. It looks like Visio, or it looks like AutoCAD, and it's like, well, yeah, it's drafting software, but you have to know what you want out of a project before you start drawing things. Just like, you know, I have to know what I want to make in the in SolidWorks Mechanical, uh, know what I want to make it out of, know how I'm going to make it. Is this a sheet metal part? Is this a machined part? Is this an injection molded part? You know, these things all go together as I'm starting to build out, a, you know, a 3D model. Same deal on the electrical side. So, what kind of documents do we want to see? Single line, multi-line, all that. Do we already have symbols for these? How about some title blocks with our fancy logo? You know, we, we want to start getting this stuff together. Which parts from which manufacturers are we going to use? Do we have data sheets for that? Because we're going to need to match up those circuits and terminals, right? And geez, a, a bomb and a schematic from a previous project would be a great place to start. A bomb because it shows you which parts you're going to use. A schematic because it kind of shows you a lot of information about how this stuff connects to each other. Not saying that this needs to be comprehensive. We're not trying to like you know do the work twice, you know whiteboard it all and then just take it down on the computer. But this stage, this thought process, we find helps ensure success on that first project. So for harnessing, it's a little simpler, right? Which connectors do we need? Do we want to do single line or multi line? Uh, what are we connecting this on? Those types of questions. So. Next, we go right into manufacturer parts. And down here on the left, I'm showing the manufacturer part that I'm going to track kind of through this presentation, which is our speed controller for uh, an RC car. Speed controller is pretty important. Uh, can't go full speed all the time, um, contrary to popular belief. So we've got two parts where we're going to add some manufacturer part information. One of them is the 2D schematic library. And here, all we really need, to be honest, is a manufacturer and a part number, right? Um, we can store multiple types of part numbers, right? If you want to have the manufacturer's part number and your own internal part number, if you link up to an ERP system or a PDM system or a PLM system, you want to have the specific numbers that all link together inside the database, we can do all of that. But all we really need is a manufacturer and a part number. Now, adding things like a class, library, and description are for searching. Those are for you, for later. So, you know, I recommend all my customers put all the parts that they add into their into a library with their company name. Just put a, make a big library with all your stuff because most of our customers 
only have, I think, 50 to 100 parts. I mean, there aren't very many people that have a library of a thousand parts that they commonly use. So throw that, you know, put things into their own classes, use libraries, use descriptions. That's so that you can find this stuff in the database later. And then circuits and terminals, right? I told you you'd hear this a few times. They've got a match. So I find that data sheets help. We have a very cool thing that I'll show you. Uh, where we can actually put data sheets straight into the project. So everybody that's looking at this project, we do really cool multi-user collaboration with, with SolidWorks Electrical. It's, it's seamless. Everybody sees the same project all the time. As somebody adds a data sheet to that project, everyone then can reference that data sheet. So it helps keep everybody on the same page as we're picking components and adding them to the library and all that. So we got them in our in the 2D library. You know, we went in there. We, in this case, I just said uh, we got a Traxxas. Uh, it looks like it's a VXL-3S uh, electronic speed controller. Great. That's all the information I really needed. But I also put in some circuit and terminal information for it. You know, power supply circuit from the battery, motor circuit out to the motor. One, two, three, or no, it's actually A, B, C. And then the uh, I just said electrical electronic component circuit for the uh, the digital circuit that runs out to the receiver. Then you go to 3D. So this is where we're, we're linking up the actual points on the, the 3D model with the circuits and terminals inside uh, the 2D library. So we prefer to do this on parts, not assemblies. We can do this on assemblies now in 2016, but it makes it a little uh, less robust. So uh, not only are parts a little more lightweight, which we'll talk about later, but um, it's a little more robust to add this uh, add this to parts so that you don't have somebody you know linking to a part inside that assembly which actually doesn't have any uh, electrical information so uh, we do this through the electrical component wizard remember I was talking about uh, you know import wizards and tools and all that I'm not gonna spend my time doing this all uh, manually I go to the wizard I if I if I have a part in the library already I'm able to pull it in by reference it's awesome and then this is where you'd add a cable connection point as well. Uh, that's where if you got multiple wires running to a, a part, they split off, you know, the loom stops and the wires fan out from there. Uh, so if all the wires come into a part, um, think like a connector with a strain relief, you'd have a, ca a cable connection point right at that strain relief and the wires would fan out inside there. So some parts have them, some parts don't. So we got some parts loaded. Cool. Now we need some symbols. So single line symbols are like the uh, the green button looking thing above called E1. Multi line symbols are like the switch uh, schematic symbol to the right. These actually could represent the exact same part. What's the difference? Multi line or schematic symbols have individual connection points for each wire that connects to them, whereas single line just have a single connection that comes up from uh, that can contain one wire or multiple wires. Single lines tend to include a picture. Uh, multi line symbols. Are, uh, tend to be more standardized uh, electrical engineering symbols. You know, this is a pretty standard symbol for a switch. Um, but really, the, the sky's the limit. I mean, you could really do whatever you want, but these, these represent different document types uh, inside SOLIDWORKS Electrical. So single line and multi-line, we kind of want to have both usually, but maybe you only want one. So we pick what we want, we make sure we got it. Units, this is a big one. So we're working in either ANSI or metric, meaning inches or millimeters, except these DWG symbols that we use are unitless. So if you've got a symbol that has five units between the connection points and you think, you know, I'm coming from metric, I know that those are five millimeters before the connection points, you know, about 200,000 spacing. I'm going to pull those into my ANSI document. If you pull them in as an ANSI symbol, you now have five inches in between your connection points. So, you know, key, word from the wise, uh, units. Keep track of those units because this unit, they did, the symbols themselves are unitless. And again, let's make sure those circuits and terminals match. So here we've got the speed controller again, that first circuit over there on the left, power input from the battery. Got another circuit over there to the receiver, another circuit out there to the motor output. These symbols on the, these, uh, sorry, these connection points on the symbol match the database because I started by adding this part to the database. I actually made the symbol as a black box, it took about 45 seconds. So anyway, uh, we're going to make sure that those match. It's kind of a common theme here. And lastly, when we're talking about symbols, dynamic connector insertion, which is, uh, I did a connectors webinar that we can uh, link to here, but uh, dynamic connector insertion where we pick a part number 
we load in the data from that part number, like, hey, this is a, you know, a four pin connector with female pins, and then it draws the symbol for us automatically. If I say I only want three of those pins, it's gonna draw me a three pin symbol with the correct pins in there. Awesome for doing connectors and harnesses. I mean, really a time saver because I don't have to have separate symbols in my library for each combination of, of pins. And I, end, I don't end up using the same huge connector symbols all the time just because, you know, hey, that's what I, that's what I already draw. So I'm going to, that's what I already drew. So I'm going to use it. Um, the other time saver would be black boxes. So over here on the right, I've got kind of a cheating example of a black box. I mean, this is literally a black box. No, no electrical information whatsoever in the receiver symbol over there because I'm not actually connecting wires to it. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about a little bit more about that. So dynamic connector insertion and black boxes make your life really easy. It makes it so that you don't have to have discrete individual symbols for all the parts that you want to use. So thanks, SolidWorks Electrical. So here we're going to draw some symbols. Um, looks like I actually went a little fast there. So tips, connectors don't actually have to connect. So we've got J5 connected to CH1 over there on the receiver. How do I know that they're connected? Well, uh, the symbol for J5 is touching the symbol for CH1 on the receiver. What does that mean? It means nothing. I'm not passing any information from those wires on the left to that connect to the uh, receiver on the right because there's no, no red dots on the front of that connector and there's no red dots on the receiver. I'm just saying these things are associated with each other in a graphical sense. Um, I know in 3D, I'm gonna position J5 into the position where CH1 would receive J5, but in the 2D sense, I don't really care about that. I'm just saying that these wires go into J5 wherever J5 is. Wire styles. Wire styles? Yes, wire styles. We're representing real wires, not lines on a page. And this is key. So over here, you'll see I've got uh, 22759 slant 43 and slant 32 populated with uh, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, uh, 22 gauge, 30 gauge. I got some, some wires in there. What does that mean? Well, instead of just saying I'm going to run a black wire from this point to this point, I actually specify the exact wire that that black line on the screen is representing. So that includes not only the nomenclature, you know, so that I, I actually am differentiating between, you know, 22759, a slant 32, and slant 43, black 20 gauge wires, but I actually have the different, all the different physical information for those wires as well. Diameter, section, gauge, you know, so we can do millimeter squared cross section or wire gauge. I've got bend radius, I've got max volts, max voltage, max frequency, just, you know, some user data fields for things like temperature, you know, some of this wire is 200 degrees C, some of this wire is 150 C, single wall or double wall. I've got spaces for all of this information. Now, all you really need is a name. I could get away with saying just 12 gauge black, right? but it's a place for all this information to go so that you make sure that you're documenting what you think you're documenting, meaning you're not gonna ever run into the point where somebody trying to build your harness says, well, I don't know, he didn't specify whether it was 12 gauge or 14 gauge. You, you're gonna specify. That's the whole point of using wire styles over just a black line on the screen, for instance. So along the same lines, wire numbering and formulas. What you're looking at here is a, a little uh, wire formula manager for one of our wire styles. And I wrote out a little SQL formula here uh, using the, the tools right here. You know, basically just find the variable you want, double click, and then add your dash or your slash or whatever to, to, to make this formula. But we're not having to do manual wire numbering. We set up a formula that, and then it, the computer wires for us. Therefore, it always stays error checked and up to date. You're never going to have duplicate wires. It's going to tell you about that. So, in this case, I have a, a number dash the wire color slash the wire section plus the units. So then this would be uh, like wire number four dash black slash 20 gauge, uh, 20 AWG, for example. Um, so you can save these. You can, uh, be, it's very easy to build these. They've made it really accessible to, to pull all this information out. And not only do you have information about the wires, you also have information about what the wires are connected to. So you could say, uh, you know, I know that this is a ground wire because I'm connected to a ground terminal of a device somewhere. And that populates all the way through the circuit. So, I mean, really cool stuff. So I say it's auto magic, uh, meaning, you know, automatic with a little uh, sprinkle of magic in there. There's no errors. There's no Excel alt tab, which is the big thing. When I'm when I'm capturing wire lists and all that, I'm, I'm always alt tabbing through. 
uh, back and forth. There's no alt tabbing and no drama. Wire numbering formulas, very cool, very big reason to use this. So we're in our drawing phase. We got some stuff down. Now let's play in 3D. This is everybody's favorite part. First, th first thing is, let's insert that mechanical top level. So we, we've got something to work on, right? We're not gonna redraw this, uh, whatever it is that you're routing this harness on. Somebody worked hard on that top level. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from the electrical standpoint. You know, we got our mechanical team that worked really hard on that top level assembly they love so much. Well, we're going to borrow it. So it's it's all the same to them. They'll still open it exactly the same as they did. They'll still work on it, all that. But you're going to have that top level inside the SolidWorks Electrical project now linked to it because SolidWorks Electrical routes have to exist in the top level. So it seems weird. It's really not weird. It doesn't, that's, it doesn't change anything for anybody else. So we're going to use that. Let's put those assemblies on a lightweight diet. Uh, uh, get it? Uh, yeah, it kind of falls flat even when I'm not speaking to myself on the internet here. Um, so we want these, we're, we're working with the top level and anytime we're working on the top level, we, uh, we, we want it to be lightweight or use our speed pack configurations because um, it's really a drag when you're working on a, you know, 500 meg or a gig assembly and it takes, you know, five seconds to redraw everything when it spins around. So we do things like suppress hardware, uh, make parts lightweight. And what this does is it basically simplifies the computations that our computer needs to do to show us this. Cause we're not actually looking to change anything in these assemblies. You know, we might move some mates or something like that to get a, you know, an extended configuration and a contracted configuration of, you know, or something like that. But we're really not you know, redrawing everything. We kind of want to use the assembly as it is most of the time. So we want to make it as lightweight as possible. And we've got a, a, a few different tools to do that. So we can suppress components. We can hide things. We can put things, uh, set things to lightweight. We can create speed pack configurations. These are all great tools for using uh, electrical for harnessing. And the other thing is, I know I talked about it before. We're going to use parts for the component wizard, not assemblies. It's a little more robust and uh, a little more lightweight. Some of these assemblies that people have for their electrical components are insane. You know, 40 meg uh, PCB where all we need is, you know, a, a four pin hundred thou connector on it. It's like, let's just make that, you know, a very simple graphics body, please. Um, and so we, we do that, you know, we might save a very complicated assembly as a part. And then we're going to apply the electrical con uh, con configuration data, the electrical component information to that part rather than to that very complicated assembly. Anyway, so... Parts, not assemblies, would be nice. And last time, uh, sorry, beating the dead horse here. Let's make sure the circuits and terminals match. So here is the speed controller on the left. This is from the data sheet. So this is telling me the actual colors, the actual positions of, uh, of these wires that they go in and all that. Here is what we saw on the other page, my, uh, my entry into the schematic database, into the 2D database with the circuits and terminals. Here is that symbol that we saw. And lastly, here's the actual 3D part. And I don't know if you can see it on the, the, the screen here, but we got individual connection points that are all linked back to the database because I made sure that they all match. Therefore, when I say, hey, route the red wire out of here, it knows that this is a red wire that routes out of the top near the middle instead of a red wire that routes out of the side or out of the bottom. So still in 3D. So now we say we've got an assembly and some parts, A. Eh? Let's associate or insert those parts. So here you'll see my th my top level assembly. This is my this is my SolidWorks electrical assembly before I started doing anything. Um, you can see I've got a couple of components in there already. I've got a speed controller. I got a motor in the back. I got a steering servo. So I'm going to insert the rest of my electrical components. In this case, I added some lights. I added some connectors, and I'm going to associate the components that are already there. Right? I don't want to have to like delete them out and then reinsert them. So I insert the electrical components that are not already in the top level. I associate 2D to 3D for the components that are already in the top level. Now I'm ready to go. So create a route path. Maybe so, maybe no. I'll show you a route path in a little bit here. But uh, sometimes you need one, sometimes you don't. This isn't like routing in SolidWorks Premium, where if you want a wire to go anywhere, you kind of have to draw that path for it. You have to make it go there. Uh, here, a route path is more like a guiding hand. You know, think, uh, hey, you know what? All, th all else being equal, um, you know, I know you know how to route your own wires, SolidWorks Electrical 3D. I'm just going to say maybe you slide over to this side, or maybe you slide a little closer to this edge, or maybe you go, go up and over this thing instead of right through it. 
Um, it's just kind of a guiding hand. And so we're able to use these in a really intelligent way with uh, with the segregation tool to say, hey, this these couple of wire styles over here, you guys are going to play with that high amperage stuff. Don't really want you interfering with my low impedance you know, DC wires over here. So I'm going to route you guys over off this way. I'm going to route the rest of you guys over this way. I'll show you that here. So maybe we need one, maybe we don't. And then we get to hit the magic button, and this is, uh, you know, this is the cool part. Is uh, we, we we just hit the wire, hit the button for route wires, or hit the button for route cables, or hit the button for route harnesses, and just watch it go. And it references our 2D data and our 3D parts on the assembly that they're on, and routes everything in real time. It's great. So. Once we've got everything routed, then we flatten those harnesses for those sweet, sweet drawings. So this is what we were talking about before. You know, you want to be that guy smiling in front of the foam board, you know, building this harness on that drawing that you made. Well, this is how we get the drawing. We do the route. We right-click that route, say flatten. We set it up on a drawing, you know, basically just choose the sheet size. And uh, there you go. Pop that right back into our electrical project if we want to. Go right out to PDM, print to PDF, whatever, you know, whatever you do. And finally, reports. So here we've got a couple of the reports. You got a bomb hanging out there in the back. That's our, our uh, electrical bomb. Uh, complete, of course. You can sort that however you want. Uh, you, next, you've got the wire list. So this is the uh, from to, you know, from individual component and the pin on that component to the destination component, the destination pin, the wire number, you know, the, the, the one dash black slash 20 gauge or whatever we, we numbered them. Um, the actual size, you could do color in a separate column, you could do, pull up any information you want in these columns, and then the individual routed length for those wires. So you know exactly what to cut. Down at the bottom there in the red, you see the combined length for all the wires of that type, so all your 12 gauge black, all your 20 gauge red, you know, so you know what to buy. And lastly, that one that I cropped pretty tight there is the uh, wire labels. So we, if you have a wire labeling machine, uh, this automatically will export the table for your wire labeling machine so you don't have to type that stuff in manually either. That was like the one thing that people were still going to Excel for and you don't have to do it. So thank me later. So there we go. Whiteboard, manufacturer parts, put some symbols in there, draw some stuff, get to play in 3D, pull some reports. Now let's see it in action. Ah, that's exciting. All right, so we're going to hop in here. I'll show you SolidWorks Electrical 2D first. Um, here's my project. You can see this is uh, definitely a different piece of software than uh, SolidWorks Electrical 3D. I've got a cover page, got a drawing list, I got a line diagram. I'm going to hop right in here to my scheme diagram. And this is the diagram that's driving everything. It's fairly simple. You know, I didn't try, didn't want to keep it super complicated. Here we got some headlights, right? These are, uh, you can see that I'm clicking these. This, these look like you know, symbols, they look like graphics, except when I double click these, I actually get a lot of information for these components. And then if I go to the manufacturer, here I've said, you know, Hella Mini Optilux, one to three scale Optilux 1300 driving light. I actually can, you know, drill down all the way into the manufacturer data right here from the drawing sheet. Uh, next we have our, our wires, right? So these are individual lines, but they're representing actual wires. So you can see over here, I have wire properties. They've got a name, they've got a routed diameter. Here I'm saying that they're 30 gauge, they're black, they have a bend radius of one times diameter. And this one is part of the headlight harness and it's 69.018855 millimeters long. I mean, super accurate stuff, right? Uh, we're using nodal indicators here. That's these little, uh, these little 45 degree chamfers on the wires. That's basically showing you how all these wires route together. Very cool little trick we got in 2016. Here's those uh, those connectors we were talking about, where uh, drawn dynamically, meaning I didn't have to have a two-pin connector with this exact setup. I basically just said, hey, you know what? I've got a connector. It's got two pins on it. Draw me a two-pin connector on the screen and pull in all the manufacturer information. So that's what it did right there. TE connectivity. Here's the part number. Here's my description. Good stuff. So we see a headlight plug plugged into J1, taillight plug plugged into J2, similar deal on taillights. Now down here, we got a different looking connector. I wanted it to look different. We got a battery, and here's that speed controller. So here's our power input. We got our uh, receiver that goes out to uh, tell us how fast to go out to the motor output. Here's our motor. We got some uh, some information there. I mean, all this stuff is uh, is is nicely organized and all that. It was easy to draw. We're using nice drafting tools. Um, 
And then here's that black box we were talking about. It's literally just, just hanging out here, uh, not connected to anything. You can see no wires actually run to it because everything uses connectors. And these connectors are drawn a little differently. They actually say which pins um, the, uh, the wires go to here. So just trying to show the, the different amount of information that we can show here. And then of course, all my wire numbering uh, that we talked about before. So um, that's really the document that's driving all this. Then we go to uh, 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and I got my uh, my assembly loaded here, and again I'm on a, a little laptop here. We don't uh, we're not using you know mainframes or anything. This is the top level assembly with a very complicated model as well as all these wire routes, and I'm uh, navigating through this thing pretty smoothly. So the lightweight stuff really does work. Uh, if I set everything to resolved and take out all my speed packs, this thing chugs along a little bit, you know, especially with real view graphics on. So. Um, Let's take a look at the wires, right? So we've got uh, we got some real routed wires in there. You, you know, people believe me by this stage, saying, "Okay, yeah, those look like wires." I got some 12 gauge there, got some 30 gauge down here. You can see that this looks quite a bit smaller in there, uh, routed around the battery over here. We got the harness that routes up, and then we got some individual stuff that runs out. Um, so people are generally saying by this point, "Okay, I believe you." You know, those are real routed wires. Sometimes we'll take one of these harnesses. And uh, we'll just do an isolate on it and say, okay, so here, if you, if you were trying to describe to someone, hey, this is the headlight harness, uh, doing an isolate is a great way to do it because it really shows you everything that's connected. You know, hey, we can actually see these wires run up here. They go into this sheath here and they come down here and they, uh, you know, connect to the back of the connector. Um, so this is, you know, nicely, if you care about the 3D graphics, 3D routes and all that, this is pretty cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, do something that nobody would ever do from regular SolidWorks electrical routing. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, route wires. And the first thing it's going to say is, um, do you want to delete your existing routes? You know, routing already exists. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and delete it. And it's going to take uh, about a minute to reroute all of the wires. And I'm going to hide this here so you can see it. It's, going to, it's doing the 30 gauge wires first and it routes one wire style at a time, meaning it's gonna do all the 30 gauge white wires first then it's gonna do all the 30 gauge red wires, all the 30 gauge black wires. So it's going through here pretty quick. After it finishes with the 30 gauge, it's gonna do the 12 gauge and we're gonna see all this stuff come back pretty much right how it was um, automatically. Here we are with our 12 gauge, and lastly our 12 gauge red. So I didn't have to touch this here. It did uh, did the wire routing all on its own, and I'm going to zoom around here, and you can see down here the servo motor, okay, looking good. Up here, up around the battery, right? We missed uh, missed that. Down here to the speed controller, the 30 gauge wire, looking good. Over here, it routed up through my little uh, my little strain relief there is what that is um, into those connectors, looking real nice. And you can see that the 12 gauge wire actually takes these nice big loopy bends, whereas the 30 gauge wire takes these much sharper bends. That's because it's respecting the actual bend radius. Now we did lose a couple of wires back here, so uh, I know that there are wires that connect the battery to this plug. And if I go to my feature ma my feature manager here my tree, I can see that I've got some errors. So I'm going to take a look at this 12 gauge route. All I have to say is edit route. And here's 12 gauge black. And this candy stripe is telling me it's got a little error message here in case I didn't know what that means. The spline radius is too small. So I'm, I'm violating my bend radius rules. And rather than draw me geometry that I've told it, you know, I can't make, uh, I can go in here and uh, I'm just going to display the control polygon here, pull this guy back a little bit to relax that spline, and now we can see that that actually does correct the problem. Now we actually also have one back here, and this one's a little a little trickier. Sorry if I'm uh, making anybody nauseous moving around here. But this one we can see, get this error message out of the way, this problem is right in here, and it looks like it's taken a real sharp bend right there, and it's because we've got uh, we've got an extra spline point here. So maybe get rid of one of these points, and now we're a lot closer. And I can actually get rid of this point here as well, 
and we're we're now you can see that the wire is gray, uh, which means we're going to route, and it looks good. It routes where it, it routes through here where it should. I'm going to go ahead and accept this sketch, and then exit this route, and we just have to fix that red route from the battery in the back, and we'll be set to go. So I can come in here and edit this guy, and same deal. I can come in here and display the control polygon, pull this back, got to get a look at, uh, there it is, pull this back. But people ask me all the time, what about fixed length? What about if I already have this pre-made, right? Like this, this battery tends to actually uh, come with this connector um, on it. Well, one of the other options we have is to right-click the spline and go to fixed length. So here I can say, you know, three and a half inches, I can say four inches, and it'll actually correct the spline to be that length. So you give it the path and it will draw that. So four inches looks like it actually brings this thing right into the, um, uh, into the back there, but you can see how, uh, how that actually does, the four, the four inch measurement does change it. So that's our route wires. Now, route harnesses is what we were here to do, right? So I grouped some of these other wires into harnesses already. Um, and that's uh, that's these ones here that you see with the common covering. So let's uh, exit the route for the uh, 12 gauge here. And here we see we've got a couple of harnesses on the left here. We've got uh, the central harness. We've got a headlight harness. We've got a taillight harness. I'm going to concentrate on the central harness here. And I'm going to do that flatten route that I was telling you about. So here it is. An isolated view, central harness all on its own, headlight harness off to the right, taillight harness off to the left, receiver there. I'm going to go to a manufacturing flatten, that's our two scale flatten, and I'm going to click the drawing options box to put this on a B-size sheet. All I have to do is hit the green check here, it does the rest for me. Flattens it out, pulls up a B-size sheet, it's asking me if I want a length field in the bomb, sure, why not? And now, instead of drawing this stuff manually in Visio or whatever, my job becomes, uh, geez, I mean, I guess I'll just um, organize these tables on this page. I mean, it really is that simple. Uh, you just make it so that the, the table, that the page looks good for you. Um, so here we've got uh, our circuit summary with our individual uh, wire numbers, their color, their individual length, their from two components. We've got our combined electrical mechanical bomb with our uh, three connectors up top, our two wire colors down here. They don't have the, the names that they should, but that's the, um, the individual wire styles. Uh, and then we have our tables. Uh, inside here, we're, we're ballooning these, which is something that I don't usually do, but um, we have our individual lengths for each of these, uh, each of these routes, and it all gets a little, gets a little uh, congested in here for something this small, but this becomes the actual work. It's just, hey, I've got this drawing already done. It's got all the information. It's linked to my assembly, so if the mechanical people change any of these measurements or where these connectors are, that's fine. All I have to do is open the drawing, and it automatically updates. I mean, this is the, this is the key. And then once I'm ready to drop this back into SolidWorks Electrical, I go to uh, Electrical Drawing up here, Create Project Drawing, it's a one-click thing. Say uh, say yes. It's telling me I already had one. Now it's saying, hey, it's already back there in the project. So I'm going to go back and take a look at it. So let's go back to SolidWorks Electrical. And what do you know? Here's document 06, automotive harnessing. This is that sheet that I was looking at. I've got a little uh, double title block action, so I'm going to remove the electrical title block here. And um, here's the SolidWorks title block with all of the stuff from the drawing, and this is a good looking document. This isn't some, you know, I didn't take a screenshot here, I'm not saving a JPEG or anything like that. This is a real, um, a real, a real document. So we've shown uh, kind of what goes into to put, making the, uh, the harness, and now I want to show the rest of what we do when we pull this out. So we've got our sheet here, which is great. The reports are the next coolest thing. So I've got list of wire tags, bill of materials, uh, wires by line style and a, a drawing list because why not and I'm gonna put these into my project and I'm actually gonna tell it I want them to go in my reports folder I have a data sheets folder here that has uh, guessed it some data sheets in it uh, I'm gonna put all these in the reports folder I'm gonna hit OK it's actually generating these in real time it took you know a second and a half um, here's my data sheets. You know, here you can see we've got uh, some of these data sheets for everything linked in here. So the list of wire tags, we saw that, right? This is a 
wires uh, by number, by color, with their uh, their size and all that. We uh, we picked that, and then so here it is fed in with the quantity for all these tags. Now the bill of materials starts with uh, it's grouped by manufacturer. That's how I usually order parts. I have a you know single distributor for this manufacturer, single distributor for that manufacturer. So we link these all um, by manufacturer. We have quantities, we have descriptions, we have the mark in the in the project as well as the part number from the manufacturer. So a, a comprehensive bomb, and we can put whatever we want in these in these uh, columns. But here's the really cool one: is for all the wires that got routed here, uh, you've got your individual routed lengths, your real deal routed lengths, and so. Here, you know, you got something like here's the 30 gauge red. We got a bunch of these 30 gauge red wires, right? Uh, and we're going from com uh, origin component and pin to destination component and pin, wire number, section, the actual length, and then down here at the bottom, the combined. Hey, if you want to build this whole harness, you need 47.74 inches. You need four feet of 30 inch uh, of 30 gauge red. So that's really where it's at. I mean, you, you, to, you to pull this information, people would usually say, oh, I'm going to, you know, measure the actual prototype with string and then add 10% or, you know, whatever it is that they do. And not only do you end up with a little bit of waste, but you can't build your harness until you've already built the mechanical part to measure it off of. And this way, we're building this all off of the SolidWorks model. So if your model's accurate, your harness is going to be accurate. So that that's really the key is we're able to do concurrent design. And that, that's the stuff that gets us all excited is being able to do our work before, you know, we don't have to wait for everyone else to do theirs. So that's the part that I like the most. Um, I'm going to cruise back here to my model here. So you can see, you know, I, I don't even have to have built this RC car before. I can just be working off of a model and I can still design all the harnesses for it, design all, all the wiring. What are we here to do? Go Engineers here to provide the design and manufacturing tools with the expertise to enable you, our customers, to reduce the cost, risk, and time required to go live with new technologies, new product introductions. I appreciate you sticking through this. This was a, a, a quick little run through of uh, harnessing fundamentals, real tips and tricks for, for building harnesses in SolidWorks Electrical. My name is Jeff Jordan. Again, I'm the engineering manager for San Diego. I do a lot of our SolidWorks Electrical uh, applications. And my email, jjordan at goengineer.com. Thanks so much and uh, look forward to chatting with you.